Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Uh, today I wanted to take a quick look into the trend control. Uh, I had a question about uh, how we can how we can modify or how we can control um, there's uh, fields here to specify the start date time, specify the duration and then day time. Uh, if we want if we want uh, want to use this um, this uh, this uh, fields here, uh, the embedded fields on the control, but we might want to do uh, the control externally, so um, we can have fields external to the control or in any other position, uh, but having the same um, functionality to control the, the the trend as it will be through the fields embedded on it. So uh, the first thing that we need to consider is that this. Uh, fields are linked to, to uh, fields internally on the control configuration. So if we open the control properties and we go to access, we can see here that in the period um, section, we have two fields, the duration and time. The duration and the time uh, should be configured with tags and there should be a string tag. So we have the duration tag here and the time tag here. Tag here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not using time, time because it's already a system tag, so I created time tag. Both are the strings. And I have the values for these tags here in the watch window, as you can see. Uh, the next thing that I configure in this control is uh, the points. I created a, a tag which replicates the value of the second tag. Uh, so that's it. That's why everything that I have. And I want you to explain how this works more or less. So the duration, uh, if you change the duration here to let's say something like uh, one minute, you will get that here and that the same value here in the duration tag. You can also write the duration through the tag. So I can write two, I can write three, and you will see that in the control, in the field, duration field in the control, the, the value is also what I have in the tag. But that's not the only thing that I need you to notice. When I change the duration, what I'm changing indirectly is the start uh, date and time. So here the date and time on the left. If I change the duration to something bigger, I need you to check that. So I will change it to one hour. I need, I need you to check this, please, this, uh, the start uh, time. So if I change the duration, as you can see here, the time changes for the start date time. So what I change with the duration is the date start, uh, the, sorry, the start date, date and time. In the same way, if I change that here, you will notice that the duration changes. Only the duration changes. So the, the, the end date and time doesn't change at all. So we, what this means is that with the duration, you can control here the start date and time. The only, need, the, the only thing that you need is this parameter, which is basically the current date and time. So the current date and the current time. and uh, do a calculation based on the duration to get this. Or in the reverse way, you can um, calculate the duration if you um, uh, find the difference between the current date and time and the specified date and time on other external controls. Which controls? You can use, um, let's say, an ActiveX control from Microsoft, which is the Microsoft date time picker. You can put it here and you can configure it. It has several options, but I will use just the value. Let's say that I have a date picker tag, which is a string. So date picker here. Date Let's save the changes and it will receive the value that you can select here. 
in the same way you can create this field to select uh, the time so you will end up having the uh, the date and time so let's say that the duration is uh, 24 hours from now so i will do it here 24 hours Okay, so 24 hours, same time, time here, same time here. The date is different, one day of difference. So you can have that like this to simulate this uh, value. So what you can do is uh, to get this uh, specific duration, you can maybe um, you can maybe calculate the uh, day, time, two clock for the current date and the current time. And you will get the number of seconds that the lab labs for the current date and time. And you can do the same for the date picker. And of course, you might want to have also time picker, for instance, uh, if you have a custom field for that. But I'm using the same time, so that's not a problem now. So you have the number of seconds for this specific time, date uh, selected with the date time picker. So you can do now, it's what you can do now is basically uh, get the differences, the difference between this uh, functions results to get a number of seconds. So you can uh, divide those seconds into let's say hours to get the number of hours. And as you can see, you get the same than duration. So you can write this value into duration and the duration will be applied in the train control in consequence. So you can, you can do that. You can do that for the, for the duration and manipulate the start date and time based on the duration. The next thing that we want to analyze is the uh, finish or the end date and time for the trend. So I have the time time tag here for that. What it does is basically is basically an offset. So if we put let's say 30, uh, it will show um, 30 seconds of, of the uh, as an offset uh, compared with the current date and time. So let's say that I can put here. 24, 24 hours. And what it will do is show data for one day uh, previous to the current uh, date and time. So we can manipulate the finish with that, but as you can see, it doesn't change the, the duration at all. So the duration is always fixed and based on the duration, we manipulate this. So this is, the result of the um, end date and time uh, means the duration and result the difference is the uh, start date and time. So one more time, we can go back this to the current date and time. So you can get that. And uh, also if we pause the trend, the behavior Thirty hours now. Thirty minutes. Sorry. So the behavior of, for this time tag um, will be different uh, if we uh, if we pause the trend. So if we pause the trend, you will see here that the value changes to a string with a date and time. So this now is my start date, date and time. And this is the duration uh, after the trend duration after that that day, day and time. So let's say that I can start the trend at uh, the 16 hours, zero zero seconds and zero 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 milliseconds. And I want to have data for the last uh, hour after that. So it's showing data from the 16 hours to the 17 hours. So when the trend is paused, the, ta the time tag tag, on this case, uh, 
has a different behavior than when the runtime is running. And this is also explained in the manual. But as you can see, you can dynamically control uh, both the start date time and the, uh, and the uh, finish date time uh, through tags and through scripting. Uh, the control for this, for the start, is not direct because it depends on the duration, but you can also calculate the duration to get this number or get the duration from uh, custom uh, date and time configuration. So that's it. Uh, I hope this video is it's useful to understand better how the period uh, configuration works for uh, the trend control. If you have any question in the comment, leave, them, leave it in the comments below.